Howdy everyone. Good evening. And welcome to the gorgeous Washita National Forest in Arkansas. Yes, so beautiful here. And we are so excited because as you know, if you've been watching our vlogs, we've been out west all summer with the wildfires and we have not been able to have a campfire. So we've been missing my homemade pizza. We're really excited today. We have a good campfire going and we can make my pizza in a Dutch oven. So let's get started. First thing we have to do is make the dough. So on this pizza, I love to make my dough homemade from scratch. This dough has to rise for an hour. So that's why we need to go ahead and make it ahead of time. First thing we need is some flour. So we're gonna do two cups of flour. Two cups, oop. This is not really, this is a cereal container. It's not really for flour. Um, two cups of flour right there. Put it in our bowl. Next thing you're gonna need is one package of yeast. Um, this is a good brand. My favorite brand is the Red Star and I did not see it at the grocery store so I had to get this one. And we're just gonna put it in there dry with the flour. Now we need some salt and I of course like to use the Himalayan pink sea salt. This is, or is it sea salt? I don't know, pink salt. This is the only salt that I use on anything and everything. And I'm gonna make sure I mix that up really well. All right, next thing we need to do is we need some warm water. And so since I do not have a tap here, what I'm going to do is boil a little bit of water. I'm not going to boil it all the way. I'm just gonna kinda heat it up. And I usually pour about a cup in my measuring cup, but I won't probably use the whole cup. It, I'm gonna kind of stir it intermittently as I'm adding a little bit of water at a time. So I might not use the whole cup. So let's get some water boiling. We've got some warm water here. Before we put the water in, I'm going to use a tablespoon and we're going to do a tablespoon of oil. And I love to use the grapeseed oil I use this for everything. I do, don't even use olive oil or any other kind of oil. This is my go-to. Then we're gonna use some honey and I like to use a local honey. Local honey is your way to go. You don't really wanna get just your regular old shelf honey. It has usually processed chemicals in it. So local honey is straight from the source and it is good for your allergies. And the reason that is good for your allergies is normally if you get a local honey, the bees that are in the local area are sourcing their pollen from plants that are in the region that you're currently in. Mm -hmm. So if you consume the honey that they make, it is basically kind of like a... Allergy pill like, on steroids. Yeah, you can become immune to it. So all good things there. So I'm just going to put the tablespoon of honey in there as well. Next, we're gonna add our water, but instead of using the spoon, I'm going to use a chopstick. And you're gonna ask me why. Well, because we, before we moved, um, I had a KitchenAid mixer and it had a dough hook on it, which this is the only thing I can find that resembles a dough hook. So this is what we're gonna use. And I'm gonna go ahead and pour some water in there. And I'm just going to do it a little bit at a time and kind of just stir it around. When I'm putting the water in my dough, the consistency I'm looking for is for all the dough to kind of combine together and form a ball. So as I'm twirling it around, I'm picking up any loose ends. And then once it all becomes um, attached and kind of rolls into a ball, there's no more dry bits in the corners, then you know it's good to go. This is the consistency I came up with. I might have put a little bit too much water, but it's still going to be good. So what I'm going to do is just cover it with a towel, a dry towel, and we're going to leave it here to rise. It actually needs to rise in a uh, cool area, so I'm going to move it over. Somewhere where the sun's not. Where should we put it? Here? Oh, yeah. Alright. So we're going to leave it here to rise out of the sun. And we'll come back to it in an hour. Actually, in about 30 minutes, I'm going to start the rest of the ingredients. So, 
we're just gonna see you in 30 minutes. Welcome back, 30 minutes later. We still have 30 more minutes for the pizza dough to rise, but I'm gonna go ahead and start my onion. So this recipe has a caramelized onion, and I like to use a red onion. So the first thing we're gonna do is slice this onion up into half moon shapes. So I'm just gonna kinda do them a little thin if you can. To caramelize the onion, you wanna go ahead and start your burner. We're gonna throw in a couple of tablespoons of butter. I'm gonna keep the butter out because I might wanna use more butter uh, once that melts and we get the onion in, toss it around a little bit, I might wanna add more butter. So my butter is melted and I'm gonna go ahead and toss in my onion. And we're just gonna cook it until it's good and caramelized. My onions are nice and caramelized. I'm gonna turn the burner off and we are going to transfer to a plate because we're gonna use this skillet to make the pizza sauce. Now we're gonna get the pizza sauce going. It is a tomato-based sauce. I don't even think I told you, did I tell you what kind of pizza I'm making? Man, I don't think you did. Oh my God, I'm so sorry. I am making a pepperoni pizza, but it's not your traditional pepperoni. I like to add, of course, the caramelized onions. Um, I'm making my sauce a little bit spicier and um, pepperonis and mozzarella. So I guess it's kind of your traditional, uh, but I am going to chop up some garlic. We got our skillet going again. We're gonna add in some oil. Of course, I like grapeseed oil. We're gonna toss in some red pepper flakes, which I said it was gonna be a little spicy. That's Maybe not the that. only spice she's adding. Nope. Things get a little crazier later on. I've got some fennel seed and I would love to like chop it up really fine, but I can't. So we're gonna kind of toss this around a little bit with the oil, just until it kind of becomes fragrant. Now let's toss in the garlic. And we're only gonna let that cook for a few, maybe like a minute, 30 seconds. All right, so my garlic is, I wanna say it's pretty done. You don't want it crispy, but you want it to kind of be a little darker color. Now, my skillet is piping, I mean piping hot. So when I pour the next ingredient, which is just tomato sauce in here, it's probably going to explode everywhere. So I need you prepare to move things out of the way. Can I remove this so uh, this doesn't get dirty? Yes, please. Okay. I kind of turned, I went in and turned my, if you cook with cast iron and you cook on this oven or stove top and you're outside, you probably know what I'm talking about. So let's see what happens. Not too bad. If you keep it moving, it doesn't get too bad. Awesome. I'm gonna add the rest of the ingredient. While she's throwing that away, I want to tell you about the stove. This is not just a normal stovetop stove. It took us a long time to find it. Most stoves burn at BTUs of 6,000 to about 12,000. This 25,000 BTUs per bur burner, and this is by Bass Pro. It's the only stovetop that's gas powered that we found that burns at 25,000. Everything else, max 12,000. Pretty awesome. Next, I'm gonna add in some, I've turned my burner back on by the way, and I'm gonna add in some tomato paste. That's gonna kinda help thicken the sauce up. I'm also going to do literally a pinch of flour, um, sugar. You can also use honey if you wanna use honey as well. Um, we've got some salt and pepper, of course. So the only thing bad about this burner being 25,000 BTUs is if you use little green bottles of propane that you can get from camping, it goes through those very fast. So we're actually hooked up with a hose that we got from Home Depot that connects directly to this big old bottle of propane. And we haven't had any issues. We've only filled it up a couple times in the last three months. Of course, you gotta realize we're using that propane two to three times a day. So we're doing pretty good. 
I am also going to add some oregano. What in part? I have some fresh basil. All right, and the basil goes in. All right, so we're just going to let this go until it thickens up to your consistency that you like of a tomato uh, pasta pizza sauce. What's that for? That timer is for our pizza dough, which I was going to just about get to next. Let's see what it looks like. Oh, that looks good. That's a lot of dough, That man. looks really good. But you know what I just remembered? I forgot to put olive oil in the pan. It doesn't really make a difference, but it's just gonna make it taste better. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add some fresh oil. And I said olive oil. I don't know why, I never use olive oil. It's just a habit, I think, but I use grapeseed oil. I have some cornmeal that I'm going to put on my parchment paper and some flour. All right. Remember I told you that I kind of accidentally made my dough too runny, which it happens. So um, the flour and the cornmeal really help. And plus the cornmeal is gonna give it a really crunchy texture. So let me just kind of mix this all together. All right, so I put that oil in there. Ooh, yeah, that's perfect. So I'm just gonna kind of incorporate it all. The oil, it kind of helps it make it really slippery. You know what that would make really good? Breadsticks. Well, it's the same way that you would. But I could see some really good like cheese breadsticks with that dipping sauce. All right, so now transfer that there. So what's the process now? So right now, actually we need to get some good coals going. We need to get the Dutch oven in there. Oh, preheat the Dutch oven? Yeah. Got that in there for preheating purposes. Not sure why the chef needs the Dutch oven preheated. Preheated. Kind of like you would preheat your oven at home. Oh. Same concept. All right, so back to the dough. We've got the dough here. You see we've got some flour and cornmeal on top. I still have my sauce on a very low heat, getting it thickened up. So it's on a very low heat, so it doesn't pop on me if you're at home. You could probably have it on a medium, but it's getting a little crazy. All right, so I'm just gonna kind of roll this out. If it starts sticking to your rolling pin, just get you some more flour. Actually, I don't even think I need that rolling pin. It's working better without it. Can you toss it up in the air over your head? No, sir, I cannot. Okay. <laughs> this is probably a good size here. And once I put it in there, I can kind of roll the ends up to get you a good thick crust that we can use to dip into our leftover sauce. So this is actually good, I think. I think we're good. We don't need any more cornmeal or flour. Okay, Cody's got the preheated Dutch oven over here. All I'm gonna do is put the dough into the oven. Oh yeah. See how it kind of starts curling up on the corners? Um, that's fine. That's how we're gonna do our ends. So I'm really weird and random. I like to cook my dough before I put any toppings on it. So if anybody else does that, leave me a comment below because I would like to know. I've just always found out that my dough never gets done and my toppings are done. So I go ahead and I cook my dough first for I'm gonna just say maybe 10 minutes. I'll check it intermittently just to make sure that um, whenever it kind of looks done around the sides and there's like some bubbles forming, then I know it's time to put the toppings on. I'm gonna go ahead and shred some mozzarella. Dough looks good. Now it is time for the topping. So we're gonna put some sauce. And you're probably like, wow, this is a really small pizza. Yeah, <laughs> only because <laughs> my little pan is so small. 
But we're gonna have lots of bread for dipping and I'm gonna kind of overflow the cheese and everything. I, you know, I eat a lot. I eat a lot. I like food. However, when I first saw this, I too thought it was a small pizza. But with how thick the dough was, and don't think of like a gummy dough, it's actually all breads, all solid. I got really full off of it. Next, we've got some hot sauce. And then our caramelized onion. That's Uptown High Rent right there. Put them all in there? Yeah. Heck yeah, okay. All right, then I like to do another something weird. So I like to do some cheese. Okay, and then the main ingredient, which is the pepperoni. I love this brand. It is from Kroger or any store that is affiliated. Same as, yeah, affiliated with Kroger. And like I said, I'm gonna overlap it. So. That's called Private Selection, right? Yes, that is the Private Selection brand. All right, now we put the rest of the cheese. And now we put it back on the fire. All right. So how long are we gonna let that go, babe? I'm thinking, I'm just gonna say 10 minutes and then I'll go check it. See you in 10 minutes. Oh, it's done. Look at that, y'all. All right, so what I like to do is take it out of the Dutch oven. I'm going to place it still on the parchment paper if I can. If I can't, it's not a big of a deal onto my wooden cutting board. I want to let it rest before I even start cutting it or anything like that. We are gonna sit by this beautiful creek and enjoy this delicious pizza. So if you're first time viewers, make sure you check out our Thursday night vlogs. They premiere every Thursday night, Central Standard Time at 8 p.m. You can check it out on our channel. That's where we actually go do adventures. Kelly cooks more dishes like this. Some things a little bit more crazier, like scones. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this and you can try to make a homemade pizza dough with pepperoni pizza. It's so good. And we'll catch you on the other. Bye.